Hey, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video and in today's video I want to take a look at the Outer World system requirements and also give you my in-depth thoughts on the game A game that I am very much excited for my excitement had dissipated a little bit When they announced that the game was not going to be released on Steam right away And it would be an Epic Game Store exclusive But now knowing that it's going to be on Xbox Game Pass and we'll talk about that in a little bit a lot of my excitement for the game has been regenerated, especially knowing that I can play the game super, super cheap. But I also want to take a look at the system requirements for the game, which are very, very tame. For a new game in 2019 to have as low of system requirements that the Outer Worlds does, it's definitely a nice thing. And Obsidian is typically a studio that their games aren't like technical monsters or anything like that. If you look at Pillars of Eternity, even Fallout New Vegas when it came out, and a lot of the other Obsidian titles, they're pretty tame in terms of technical requirements and in the case of Outer Worlds possibly doubly so because the minimum requirements especially are very very tame. A little bit beefier recommended but even still it's nothing too crazy so let's get right into it and let's take a look at the minimum requirements. First up you will need an Intel Core i3 3225 or an AMD Phenom 2 X6 1100T for a minimum CPU. That's pretty crazy that the Phenom 2 is still kicking around and being listed as minimum requirements. It is the X6 and not the X4. Uh, the X6 I believe was a 6-core CPU. X4 was, of course, a quad-core CPU. Uh, the 1100T was a good CPU at its time, but obviously, back then, it's not like a lot of people were buying the CPU, because at that time, having 6 cores wasn't really a big deal, but having 4 cores was perfectly fine, so you people were usually getting the Phenom 2 X4. Nonetheless, just really interesting and kind of a throwback to see CPUs like that still being listed in 2019. And we're talking about a CPU that's, what, 9 or 10 years old? I don't think it's hyperbole in saying that. It's literally been 9 or 10 years since the Phenom 2 has been released. So kind of absurd to see it still being listed. I mean, 9 or 10 years ago, the PlayStation 3 was still in the midst of its console life cycle, as was the Xbox 360. To kind of give you an idea of where we're at at this point, recommended CPU requirement is a lot higher. Intel Core i7 7700K or a Ryzen 5 1600. That's a lot more comparable to what a lot of games list as recommended. Even still, that's not anything too crazy, and I do think if you have a decent i5, you're going to be fine. The Ryzen 5 5600 is an awesome CPU, but essentially what this illustrates is that if you have a CPU with more than four cores or hyper-threading or anything like that, Outer Worlds is going to be a game that's advantageous in regards to that. That's why they're listing stuff like a 7700K, but if you compare like a 7700K to a Ryzen 5 1600, price-wise and performance-wise, they are a little bit far apart. So nonetheless, I think that is to be expected. Minimum RAM requirement, 4 gigabytes of RAM, pretty crazy whenever you see a modern 2019 game being listed for 4 gigabytes of RAM. Nonetheless, it is always nice to see. And recommended RAM is 8 gigabytes of RAM, so this isn't one that's even recommending, you know, 12 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes, and with an open world, and with a big RPG like this, these are the kinds of games sometimes you do expect higher RAM requirements. However, in the case of this, 8 gigabytes of RAM is recommended. GPU requirement this is probably what you guys care about the most. NVIDIA GeForce GTX 650 Ti or an AMD Radeon HD 7850 is minimum. Now, this is interesting because if my memory serves me correctly, now, yes, these GPUs are very old, but I believe the 650 Ti is considerably less powerful than the 7850, so make that of what you will. Both of those GPUs are a little bit on the older side, so compare performances, I might not be completely on the money, but I do believe the 7850 was a step above the 650 Ti. I believe it was actually right between the 650 Ti and the GTX 660, so it might not be as far apart as I'm thinking. But nonetheless, there you have it there. Those are very old GPUs, so if you bought something anytime recent, you probably have something just as good, if not considerably better. As far as recommended GPU, even that isn't anything too crazy. GTX 1066 GB or a Radeon RX 470, I find this kind of interesting because I believe the 1060 is quite a bit better than the RX 470, but nonetheless, as far as GPU requirements go, nothing too crazy, especially from the minimum end. Even if you do look at the recommended requirements, that's nothing too crazy. If you bought a decent PC in the last two to three years, you probably have something relatively comparable to a 1066 gigabyte or an RX 470. And even if you fall somewhere in between a 650 Ti and a 1066 gigabyte, you're probably still going to be running the game fairly decently. Lastly, the install of the game is rather small as well. A 40 gigabyte install, so that seems pretty tame when you compare it to games like The Witcher 3, when you compare it to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. 40 gigabytes is pretty much nothing. Usually you expect games to be north of 55, 60 gigabytes in 2019, but hey, this game seems to be tame in all regards in terms of performance and what it's expecting out of your PC. 
All right, so those are the system requirements. I also want to talk a little bit about the game because I am very, very interested in this game. Again, as I mentioned at the top, a lot of my interest had dissipated once this game was confirmed to not be coming to Steam right away and it was going to be Epic Game Store exclusive. I was like, okay, maybe I'll wait on this for a little while, wait for it to come to Steam or whatever the case may be. But then they came out and said that the game was going to be available in its entirely on release day on Xbox Game Pass on PC. Yes, you can literally sign up for Game Pass on PC, which is $5 a month in this beta period, and they're running a promotion. I think you can get your first month for a dollar. I'm not sure if they're still running the two months for $2 thing. They're running promotions all the time, so you can pretty much get uh, Game Pass subscriptions close to free for a couple of dollars. You can get access to the Outer Worlds, and that is insane. I mean, I was ready to spend $59.99 on this game on Steam, but now you're telling me I can just spend a $5 a month and keep my Game Pass subscription going, which I was going to do anyway, and I can play the Outer Worlds through that? Hell yeah, I am all on board. I've already been using the hell out of Game Pass to play Gears 5 and that's been really good. I didn't have to pay $60 for that, even though you can make a legitimate argument that that game was worth $60, but hey, I'm saving all this money. I know a lot of you guys are not completely into subscription services, but if you're gonna make it this good for me where I'm paying $5 a month and I'm getting Outer Worlds, I'm getting Gears 5, I'm getting a ton of other great games. Dead Cells is on there, Metro Exodus is on there, Forza Horizon 4, one of the best racing games of this generation. Hell yeah, I'm gonna be all on board with a subscription service in that regard, would I like to own the game on my platform of choice? Absolutely. But hey, I can just sign up for the subscription service for $5 a month. And then if I really want the game on Steam, two to three years from now, the complete edition, definitive edition with any DLC they release, if they do go that route, will probably be available for like 10 bucks. And then I can buy it then if I so badly want it on Steam or whatever. I can go that route. The game itself looks rather interesting because this is very much a player choice driven title. So if you are expecting this game to be this vast open world RPG, you're not necessarily going to find that here. Rather, this is a game that is going to have a decent amount of content. But what is happening is like you have these smaller worlds to explore in the game that aren't as big as like, say, a grandiose open world game. But you have a significant number of them. And there is going to be an incredible amount of replayability to this game because, again, it is so play player and choice driven that every time you play this game it is going to be a little bit different if you do something a little bit different in the beginning of the game that can change the course of the story or at least have significant ramification and they actually have a cool emphasis on this game and the fact that you can be flawed in the game but in a good way new to the outer worlds is the idea of flaws a compelling hero is noted to be made by flaws that they carry with them while playing the outer worlds the game tracks your experience to find what you aren't particularly good at if you keep getting attacked by rabidons for example taking the rat Phobia Flaw gives you a debuff when confronting the creatures, but rewards you with an additional character perk immediately. This optional approach to the game helps you build your character as you explore, and Companions is going to be a big part of the game. During your journey through the furthest colony, you'll meet a host of characters who you'll want to join your crew. Armed with unique abilities, these Companions all have their own missions, motivations, and ideas. It's up to you to help them achieve their goals or to turn on them to your own ends. And explore the corporate colony. Halcyon is a colony at the edge of the galaxy owned and operated by a corporate board. They control everything except for the alien monsters left behind. When the terraforming of the colonies, two planets didn't exactly go according to plan. Find your ship, build your crew, and explore the settlements, space stations, and other intriguing locations through Halcyon. It's kind of interesting because this is Obsidian's final title before they are acquired by Microsoft. This isn't a game that's self-published by Obsidian. However, it was published by Private Division, which makes a lot of sense why this game did go the route of Epic Game Store exclusivity, given that Private Division is all under the same umbrella with take two and 2k and a lot of their games have of course been uh epic game store exclusive whether it be borderlands 3 red dead has even got a pseudo exclusivity kind of but a lot of those titles seem to be seeing a lot of egs exclusivities to varying degrees in the case of borderlands 3 it's a legit timed exclusive with red dead redemption 2 the release is just coming out on steam later in the case of the outer world it's on uh epic game store and game pass so rolled out in different ways, but you guys get the idea. Again, Obsidian is being acquired by Microsoft, and maybe that's the reason why it was really easy to make an agreement of this game eventually being on Game Pass right away. I don't know why that is, but I'm actually excited for that acquisition. Obsidian is a very talented studio. However, if there's anything that's limited them in the past, it's that they may have not had the most significant budget in the world to work with. When you're working with Microsoft and you're owned by Xbox Game Studios, the struggles of not having a significant budget, that's really going to be remedied. Obviously, they can't just burn money to the ground or anything like that, but they're going to be able to create some very, very marquee titles and some high-key titles on Xbox One and, of course, on PC. They're all going to be released. They're going to be available on 
on Steam by the looks of it, considering Gears 5, Halo MCC, and all of these titles have been released on Steam, and if they're available on Game Pass as well, I think that's just a winner all around for the PC gamer, for the PlayStation guys, a little bit of a bummer because now they're not going to get access to the games, but whatever the case may be... I think there's a lot of potential with Obsidian going into the future, and as far as the Outer Worlds go, I'm very excited for it in terms of just being a quality single-player experience. It doesn't have to be the biggest game in the world. It doesn't have to be the most gigantic open-world RPG that I've ever seen. If it's a compelling experience with a quality story, replayability, for those of you that want to stay invested, I think the game is going to turn out rather well, and it's out October 25th, same day as Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but I think from a PC gamer standpoint, Outer Worlds is the game the majority of us are looking forward to and the fact that we're going to be able to play the game super cheap that just incentivizes the subscription to game pass i would say and the playing of this game even more that's going to conclude this video definitely let me know your guys thoughts in the comment section down below are you going to be checking out the game are you going to join xbox game pass on pc to play it are you going to wait for the steam release let me know what your plan is are you buying it on the epic game store for whatever reason sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below if you guys have a request for a future video you can leave that in the comments as well and i will catch you guys in the next one peace out Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting, but as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.